Good morning. Today we read Second Kings chapter eighteen, and it's about King Hezekiah. In the next few chapters, we'll read about his story, and we have a good king finally doing what is right in the eyes of God. So let's read that first. First one. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, the son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father David had done. He removed the high places and broke the sacred pillars, cut down the wooden image, and broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days, the children of Israel burned incense to it and called it Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, none who were before him. For he held fast to the Lord; he did not depart from following him. But kept his commandments, which the Lord had commanded Moses. The Lord was with him. He prospered wherever he went, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. He subdued the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory, from Watchtower to Fortified City. So we see that King Hezekiah, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, just as his father David had done, and he broke the sacred pillars, the wooden idols,、um, and even the bronze serpent that Moses had made. Uh, which the people worshipped, and he even removed the high places. Finally, there was a king who would remove the high places after so many years. What was the bronze serpent? Actually, the Israelites they sin against God in the wilderness, and so. Um, God sent some serpents to bite the Israelites, and as Moses pleaded for the people, God asked him to make the bronze serpent so whoever look at him would be healed. But then、um, the Israelites started to worship him. At the times of the kings, hoping that the bronze serpent could keep them and heal them, so this bronze serpent became an idol itself, and the Israelites burned incense to it. But no one found that problematic because that bronze serpent was made by Moses. They didn't think that was the idol. Because that bronze serpent brought healing and was powerful before, and you see men are interesting. In today's wording, it's like there's a servant of God, and people lift that servant up more and more, and finally, that pastor becomes someone that the people worship. So it was the same for the serpent, the bronze serpent. It became an idol, but no one found that problematic. And that was why King Hezekiah removed and broke this bronze serpent. And it says in the Bible that Hezekiah trusted in the Lord God of Israel. And there was none like him among all the kings of Judah. He held fast to the Lord and did not depart from following God, keeping His commandments, which the Lord had commanded Moses. So we see that Hezekiah devoted himself to God. He would focus on worshiping God, only relied on God, and so. 
The result was that the Lord was with him, and he prospered wherever he went. And this comment actually was given to David and to Solomon before he fell. That the Lord was with him, and he prospered wherever he went. Because Hezekiah relied on God only, so the Lord blessed him. That was like a small revival in the Southern Kingdom, and so the people started their godly life again. You see, when the king. Has decided to follow God. The whole country also follow God, and so even though the Northern Kingdom was still far away from God, going astray from God, in the Southern Kingdom there was a small revival, and then we see that King Azekiah who rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. He subdued the Philistines as far as Gaza and his territory, from Watchtower to fortified city, because he followed God. God blessed him, and he could even overcome the Philistines, and even took the land back for the country, and. The country became strengthened and prosperous. Now let's continue to read verse nine on. Now it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, the son of Elah, king of Israel, the Shemanaza, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. And at the end of three years, they took it. In the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is the ninth year of Hoshea, sent. King of Israel, Samaria was taken. Then the king of Assyria carried Israel away captive to Assyria and put them in the Halal and by the harbor, the river of Gonzan, and in the cities of Midis, because they did not obey the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed His covenant and all that Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded, and they would neither hear nor do them. So we see that Israel came up against the northern kingdom and took the city of Samaria, and that was because the northern kingdom would not listen to God, despite the fact that God has sent many prophets to warn them. And actually, one king became worse than the previous one, and so in the end, God just let them go to the hand of the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria was carried、uh, carried Israel away captive to Assyria. And maybe because of that, it prompted Hezekiah to follow the follow the Lord more wholeheartedly, because he saw what happened to the Northern Kingdom. Hezekiah did what was right in the sight of God and followed David. And let's continue to read verse thirteen. And in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah. Shenusharab, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. Then Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria at Lachish, saying, "I have done wrong. Turn away from me. Whatever you impose on me, I will pay." And the king of Assyria sent Hezekiah, king of Judah, three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. So Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house. At that time, Hezekiah stripped the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord, and from the pillars which Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlaid, and gave it to the king of Assyria, 
Well, we see that the king of Assyria came to King Hezekiah came to Judah again because the southern kingdom took the Philistines area earlier, and this time Hezekiah decided to give the king of Assyria the wealth of his country. The silver and gold to compensate to the king of Assyria, and at this point, the southern kingdom must have been stripped of all its treasures. So, at this point, you may wonder why would this happen? The southern kingdom was prosperous, and now. When the king of Assyria came to attack Judah, you know, Hezekiah relied on God. But then this time, he did not inquire of God, but he sent he sent messages and said to the king of Assyria that he was wrong. So the first reaction was to compensate. He did not inquire of the Lord what to do. So maybe God was testing Hezekiah. What would he do in the midst when he faced trouble? Yes, he loved the Lord. He removed the high places and the secret pillars, and even the bronze serpent of Moses. But when he faced challenge and difficulty, what did he do? So it's interesting. Some people also rely on the Lord when everything is smooth, but when there is difficulty, they don't know how to rely on God, and they just、um, use all kinds of ways, but of their own wisdom to resolve the problem. And actually, there's another kind of people who would. Not rely on God when everything is smooth sail, but when there are difficulties, they will go to the Lord. So there are two different kinds of people, and of course, there are others who would never rely on God whether everything is fine or when there's trouble. So Hezekiah just reacted like automatically. When the king of Assyria came up, and he just said, "Okay, let me give you my money as compensation." The problem was when men are under fear, we may make the wrong decision. Hezekiah also made the wrong decision by giving all the treasures from his country. But the problem was. After giving all the wealth from his country, the problem was not resolved. In fact, when we do things not in the ways of God, the problem will not never be resolved. It will appear again and again. And so, let's continue to read the next section. First, seventeen. Then the king of Assyria sent the Tartan, the Rabsaris, and the Rabshaka from Nakish with a great army against Jerusalem to King Hezekiah, and they went up and came to Jerusalem. When they had come up, they went and stood by the aqueduct from the upper pool, which was on the highway to the fuller's field. And when they had called to the king Eliakim, the son of Helikia, who was over the household, Shibna the scribe, and Joah the son of Asaph the recorder, came out to them. Then the Rabshakeh said to them, "Say now to Hezekiah, the sister of great king, the king of Assyria, what confidence is this in which you trust? You speak of having plans and power for war, but they are mere words. And in whom do you trust that you rebel against me?" 
Now look, you trusting in the staff of this broken reed, Egypt, on which if a man leans, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all who trust in him. But if you say to me, we trust in the Lord our God, is it not he whose high places and whose orders Hezekiah has taken away, and said to Judah and Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem? Now therefore I ask you, give a pledge to my master, the king of Israel. And I will give you two thousand horses, if you are able on your part to put riders on them. How then will you repel one captain of the least of my master's servants and put your trust in Egypt for chariots and horsemen? Have I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it? The Lord said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. So we see that after the. King of Israel received the money from Hezekiah. He did not keep his promise. Instead, he came to attack Hezekiah, and the official of the king even came to mock the king of the, the king Hezekiah and the people. And what he said partly was true, like that they should not rely on Egypt because it it was not trustworthy. As Judah relied on Egypt, it would it was like trusting in the staff of a broken reed. And if a man leans on it, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So, Egypt was not reliable, and of course, Egypt represents the world. The world is not reliable, and so actually, Hezekiah should not be afraid of Egypt. At this point, King Hezekiah must be thinking that maybe Egypt could become his help. So that was partly true of what the messenger said. But what he said about the Lord was obviously wrong. The messenger was basically saying, "If your God is true." Then he should be protecting you. But now I'm already coming. I'm already besieging Jerusalem. So how can you say that your God is reliable? And so now let's see how Hezekiah responded. Verse twenty six. Now Eliakim the son of Hilkiah, the shipner, and Joah said to Rabshakeh, "Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it, and do not speak to us in Hebrew in the hearing of the people who are on the wall." But the Rabshakeh said to them, "Has my master sent me to your master and to speak these words, and not to the men who sit on the wall who will eat and drink their own ta- waste with you?" Then. Rabshakeh stood and called out with a loud voice in Hebrew, and spoke, saying, "Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. For says the king, Do not let his guide deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you from his hand. Nor let his guide make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. The city shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria." Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria: Make peace with me by a present, and come out to me, and every one of you eat from his own vine, and every one from his own fig tree, and every one of you drink the waters of his own cistern, until I come and take you away to the land like your own land, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive groves and honey, that you may live and not die. But do not listen to Hezekiah, lest he persuade you, saying, "The Lord will deliver us." Has any of the gods of the nations at all delivered this land from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Shepharvaim and Hena and Ava? 
Indeed, I have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Who among all the gods of the lands have delivered their countries from my hand? That the Lord shall deliver Jerusalem from my hand? But the people held the peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was, "Do not answer him." Then Eliab came, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, Shepna and the scribe. And Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and tore him the words of the Rabshaka. So it was quite strange that the Jews would ask the enemy to speak to them in Aramaic instead of Hebrew, and how would the enemy listen to you? But here we see that all Judah was actually filled with fear. You know, Assyria was very strong at that time, and the Northern Kingdom was already exiled. And now, when the army of Assyria came to the door of the Southern Kingdom, everybody was afraid, and the officials were also afraid of the people. If they listen to the words of these words, the people's hearts may be melted. So everyone was terrified. Why would you ask your enemy to take care of you like this? So of course, the enemy they did not care, and they said that. I would tell everyone, so everyone can hear in the city. We see that、uh, Judah was really in great trouble, and be everyone in the city was prepared to lose the battle. And this messenger of Assyria. He said to the people not to trust in Hezekiah and not to rely on God. He said no one could escape from the hand of the king of Assyria. So basically, what the messenger wanted was the people of the southern kingdom to come out and to surrender, and then they would receive the benefit of going to. Assyria, where there would be bread and vineyards and olives and honey and grain and new wine, etc. So actually, what the messenger said was not totally wrong. If the people would surrender, they could live a better life. But of course. They would not be the people of a country anymore. Maybe they would. They would be restricted in terms of religion or、um, how they do life. So, what was the problem of of the Israelites? You know, this place was promised by God to them, and Israel was special because they have a special connection with God. Because God has given the land to the Israelites, so they have a special bonding to the land, and. If you leave the land, then you have less relationship to the land, and so the Israelites didn't want to leave this place. But the king of Israel set up a condition, and he said that no one could save his country from my hand. And he even gave a very terrible example. 
about Samaria, that the northern kingdom was destroyed already, and the northern kingdom they used to rely and trust in Yahweh God, but then God did not protect them. So you won't be spared too, southern kingdom. But of course, that was also the reason why Hezekiah was terrified and made the wrong decision, because at that time, Northern Kingdom was no more, and so that was why the people, the officials, they torn their clothes and went to see King Hezekiah. Brothers and sisters, what about us when we face troubles? Do we face a point that we adopting God and thinking, God, are you really there? Will you help me? It's like a big challenge to our faith, like a test, a trial to us to see if we have enough faith in God, how much we trust in the Lord, even in times of difficulties. Can we still keep our faith and trust Him? Tomorrow we will see the answer, but today we should ask ourselves: Where do we put our faith when we face difficulties? Do we still trust in the Lord, or do we just make decisions out of convenience? May the Lord help us. Let's focus on the Lord who does miracles. Today we see that the Northern Kingdom was exiled. Was it because it was not powerful enough? No. Today in this chapter, Second Kings, eighteen, first eighteen, we see that they first twelve. The king of Israel carried Israel away captive to Assyria. Because they did not obey the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed His covenant. So we see that a man is successful or a man fails because he follows God, or because he doesn't follow God. It's not because we are powerful or not. So it doesn't depend on no. Circumstance. It all depends on our relationship with God. Lord, we pray for our own heart. We want to align with you again. You are the key of success. Our relationship with you is the key to success. Lord, you are our God, our Lord. We lift up your name. You in charge. You reign in our lives, in the nation, in the destiny of the whole world. We recognize you and we lift you up. So, brothers and sisters, today we see the Southern Kingdom, King Hezekiah, when he relied on God alone. And kept the commandments of Moses. God was with him wherever he went. He was prosperous. But does that mean it would be smooth sail all the time? No. He faced a great challenge. Is it the same as our lives today? We face certain challenge, and we have fear in our hearts. And facing Assyria attacking Judah, and he de- he decided to give money to solve the problem instead of relying on God. Are we like that too? That we rely on money to solve problems, or do we inquire of God?
Hezekiah went to look for Egypt. Is that like us? That we go find some power to help us, or like what we see, the Southern Kingdom officials pleaded with the officials of Assyria, speaking Hebrew, not in Aramaic, so the people cannot hear. With the enemy. Cares for us. Are we in fear? Do we want to negotiate with our enemy? Today we hear a lot of voices of the enemy in this whole chapter. You say you have power. I think that's not really true. Who can save you? How can you live? Don't listen to him. It's useless. You won't be able to make a living. Do we also hear the voice of the enemy? Or change to another place, it would be the same. When the Israelites were exiled, or、uh, when they were slaves in Egypt, and then God could save them, and now I would like the Israelites. Make a great circle. In facing Assyria, we want to let go of the land of promise that God has given us. Do we continue in faith according to God's promise? So let's have some time of reflection and tell the Lord. Thank you that we can come before you, and thank you for giving us reminder through this chapter. We confess that we have a lot of the enemy's voices in our ears. We doubt our ability. We want. We doubt if we have enough manpower and wealth. We have a lot of fears. A lot of people wonder if God could really save us till the end. Lord, we confess to you. We have a, a lot of fear, and we hear the voices of the enemies. We confess that. Not everything is smooth in our lives, and we have facing a lot of trials and fears. But thank you today. You're telling us in the midst of all these troubles, you will keep us alive. Lord, you promise us that you are covenant keeping God. Northern Kingdom was exiled because they abandoned the covenant with you. But Lord, you keep your covenant, so we choose to believe in your covenant, to choose to believe in the promise you have for us. We don't want to let go and give up. We choose to continue to trust in you alone. This trial is a test whether we can keep trusting you till the end. Hezekiah he relied on God and would not depart from Him. Lord, have mercy on us. So that we can choose to align with you again and not to forsake you. 
So we never depart from you. We never depart from you, and not use our own ways. Not listen to the enemy. We trust in your promise. We're determined to trust in you. Second Kings, chapter eighteen. Verse six. For he held fast to the Lord; he did not depart from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord had commanded Moses. The Lord was with him; he prospered wherever he went. For he held fast to the Lord; he did not depart from following God. The Lord was with him; he prospered wherever he went. Hezekiah's heart. Trusted in the Lord, so the Lord blessed him and kept him, and made him prosperous. But when he faced difficulty, when fears came, he forgot to seek the Lord. He just tried to use money to resolve the problem. So, brothers and sisters, today, huh? Much do we rely on God? Is it enough when difficulties and challenges come? What's our first reaction? Do we make decision out of fear, or can we step back and look up to God? Let's pray for our own hearts. May the Lord help us. Holy Spirit, come to us, come to our hearts. We all have different levels of fear. We fear, we fear different things. But we come before you. We confess to you that we have weaknesses and inadequacies. We love you. We trust you. But sometimes we don't trust enough. When things, problems come up, fears. Start to rain in our hearts, so sometimes we lost our direction and forget that you are God. So today we come up before you to pray to you to cry out to you. May you take this、uh, fear away, put your love always in our hearts, so we know that you are with us. Fill us with your complete, perfect love, because perfect love casts out fear. We must hold on to you tightly, and also hold on to your promises, so that we won't be afraid. Let us arise to speak to our hearts. My heart do not be afraid. Look up to the Lord, for He cares for us. He will never abandon us. So my heart return to the Lord. Stay in peace, because our Lord reigns. Jesus help us to overcome all the obstacles and fears, so we can receive healing. And we can hold fast to you and follow your ways. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our morning devotion will end here. Bless you. Bye bye.